Another breakthrough day in the fragile and fluid hostages for prisoners exchange between Israel and Hamas. Ten Israeli hostages and two Thai hostages returned to Israel territory, Israeli territory today. Here are some of them in photos that were released today. In exchange for this latest group, 30 Palestinian detainees will return home. We have reached day five of the extended pause between Israel and Hamas. CIA Director William Burns arrived in Qatar today to meet with, Israeli, to meet with Israel's spy chief and Qatar's prime minister. Per The Washington Post, the, quote, secret meetings are aimed at brokering an expansive deal between Israel and Hamas. The humanitarian situation remains catastrophic in Gaza, where health officials say the death toll has surpassed 14,500 after weeks of Israeli attacks. Israel has vowed to resume its assault on Hamas once the hostage releases end. Joining me now is Omer Bartov, professor of Holocaust and Genocide Studies at Brown University. Um, professor Bartov, I was very excited uh, when, I, when my producers told me, I asked if they could see if you'd come on the show, and they said you would. And so thank you for being here. Uh, I read your very brilliant piece, which I've printed out here and have marked up extensively so no one can even borrow it. I've marked it up. So I just want to go through a few of the things you said, and I'm going to post it on threads for those of you who follow me on the socials um, so people can read it. You said that when October 7 happened, as um, somebody who is from Israel yourself, uh, who fought in the 1973 war, you're a veteran um, of the Israeli military, you were shocked, uh, but you were not surprised. Why? Well, I, I was shocked. First of all, uh, thank you for having me on your show. It's, it's really sure. a pleasure. Um, I was shocked because uh, it was so atrocious. I mean, the, the killings were so terrible and the extent of it was so extraordinary. Uh, but I was not surprised because, as, as I write there, if you keep people under siege for 16 years without any hope, with, uh, without proper sanitation, without proper education, with very heavy unemployment, um, a place that they cannot leave, uh, it becomes a pressure cooker. And people will want to break out, and people will be brutalized by that situation. And in a sense, Hamas, uh, which is a terrorist organization, was making use of that and uh, mobilizing that rage, that frustration. And so at some point, something had to break. And so I was not surprised that it happened, although it was shocking to see. Um, you, you've also disputed some of the sort of characterizations of what's happened. I mean, this has been called a pogrom. It, it obviously is the worst attack uh, on Israel since, um, you know, I think in its existence in terms of the numbers of dead since 1948. So it, it is obviously, it's, it's being described as their 9-11. Um, but you have said that some of the characterizations are not accurate. Explain what you mean. Well, some people have called it a pogrom. Uh, and a pogrom is uh, something that happened, started happening really in the late 19th century, and these were attacks by mobs uh, on Jewish communities. And Jews uh, in southern Russia and Ukraine were living there as minorities, and the mobs were part of the majority population, sometimes assisted by the authorities. And so the police, uh, the army, was on the side of the mobs. Uh, and the whole idea of Zionism was to create a Jewish state, a Jewish majority state, where the police would be Jewish, the army would be Jewish, and uh, therefore pogroms wouldn't happen. So what happened on uh, October 7th was a terrorist attack, calling it a pogrom and um, sort of contextualizing in that way what, means, what it means is that this was an anti-Semitic attack. And therefore, what do you do with anti-Semites? If they attack you, then you have to attack them back. There's no talking with them. And that's part of how the Israeli government wants to frame this whole thing. That is to present it as something that these people just want to destroy us. We can't talk with them. We just have to either remove them or put them behind a fence. Uh, and so I think to call it a pogrom is a little bit like calling 9-11 a pogrom. It was a terrorist attack, not a pogrom. Uh, what do you make of the fact that they are talking to them now? I mean, uh, 
you know, Eden is the Israeli press. They've been very clear that Benjamin Netanyahu has seen Hamas as useful in some ways, and that the worse yes. they are, the worse they behave, the more he can point to them and say, see, that's why they'll never be a Palestinian state. Uh, he is again saying those kinds of things. There won't be a Palestinian state under his watch, that he can manage the American public opinion, et cetera. Um, he's also made it very clear that, that they want to continue this war and they would go back to bombing to eradicate Hamas. You've cast doubt on whether that can happen. Why? Whether it, Hamas can be eradicated. Well, look, I mean, it, I think Hamas is both a terrorist organization, a social movement, and the political and military hegemon in Gaza. It's an ideology. It's a belief. I do think that it could be removed as the hegemon from Gaza. I don't think that what propels it, what it feeds on, um, um, can be easily removed. In order to remove Hamas, in order to, to solve the situation, what you need is to change the political paradigm. What, what you need to say is that uh, the state of Israel, uh, after the October 7th attack, has understood that it can no longer manage the conflict, which is exactly what Netanyahu has been saying for 20 years. We will manage the conflict. Uh, and the conflict is not manageable. The conflict has to be solved. That was shown on October 7th in a horrific way, but that was shown. To change that paradigm, I think Hamas is not a good partner for negotiations. It would be very good to see Hamas gone. But the Israeli government is also not a good partner for negotiations because Netanyahu and the people to his right, who are very extreme, do not want any settlement. What they want is really, if they could, is to remove the population of Gaza from Gaza, to make them into refugees elsewhere, maybe taken for humanitarian reasons into other countries, and to gradually ethnically cleanse the West Bank and settle that too. Um, that will not happen. There are 7 million Palestinians living in areas controlled by Israel and 7 million Jews. It's 50-50. They have to learn to live together, and they have to find a way of doing that. And the Netanyahu regime will never agree to that. And so, in the long run, the way to stop this war is to change the entire political paradigm and look to a different future. Uh, we are we are out of. I was obviously good to have you back. Okay, can you please come back because I want to talk to you for longer. Um, we are out of time, but yes, if you'll come back, we'll have part two of this conversation. Then Omar Bartov, Professor Omer Bartov, thank you very much.